you see this picture? That picture is 21 years old in front of my house. Between me and my brother, we've owned more Porsche 928s than anybody in the country. And I've learned a couple things along the way that might help you not go through the emotional roller coaster that is owning a Porsche 928. Any Porsche 928 is the same as any classic. Whenever you think purchasing an older Porsche, you think maintenance. What is the maintenance on that car? What needs to be done? What has been deferred? But it's not like that. The deferred maintenance is actually not a big deal. The real issues that any new potential owner is gonna have is what I like to call the previous owner factor. What's that mean? Modification that the previous owner thought were cool and they did it to that car. And now you have to come and buy that coolness. It can be the bulk of the work of any maintenance. These cars are unbelievably well built, but when you have owners that really shouldn't be touching that car, Touching the car, issues start to happen. 10,000 watt stereo systems, lowered cars, stupid body kits, all these things are not easily remedied. For example, the 928's electrical system is very specific. The moment you put any extra amount of load on the system, it can mess up countless different things on that car that will stay messed up even after you remove the sound system. I would prefer to buy a car with original blown speakers, but original, that one has been upgraded by a previous owner that thought that he was upgrading the car. Those are the deals. Body kits are not easy to put back. Why is that? Rust can come in, especially where the connection points are. And mind you, 920s don't rust, only a little along the rear quarter panel because most of it's aluminum. So you don't have to worry about rust, but you will definitely have some kind of rust if wider flares or stupid wings was put on the car. Stay away from cars that have body kits unless you're prepared to spend countless amount of hours putting it back to the way it was supposed to be. This is the reason sites like Bring a Trailer have gone up in popularity because you have a couple people being detectives looking at one car. And so different people can share different amounts of information to get to the bottom of what's going on with the car. So besides the previous owner's factor, now we can move on to the actual maintenance, which is very, very simple. As far as the mechanicals, the 928 takes a beating because it's overbuilt. When I purchased my first Porsche 928, and this was over 20 years ago, I had read countless amount of things saying that you have to do the timing belt immediately. That's the first thing you need to do. Buy the car and tow it to your mechanic. Ridiculous. I don't know of anybody who has owned more Porsche 928s than me and my brother, and we have never had a timing belt go ever. Yes, it's something you need to do, but it's not something that you need to be scared of. Only cars that have been abandoned under a tree with trees growing out of it is a car that you definitely need to do the timing belt immediately. But most cars that were on the road and that start up, it's not life and death. How you might be led to believe if you read online. These cars, the later motors are interference motors. The early cars, they're not interference motors. And so there's an actual fear on an interference motor. It is straightforward. Water pump and timing belt, you got to take apart a lot. Change bearings, but that's not a big issue. It's straightforward. And there is countless how-tos on how to do this. The automatic transmission, it's a Mercedes unit. And that transmission, unless you are shifting it, that transmission lasts forever. Most of the Porsche 928s you see on the road today have still the original transmission. You service it, make sure it doesn't leak like Niagara Falls and keep going. The manuals, it's a different story. The early manuals, the synchros are like glass, but not in a good way. Most early manual Porsche 928 before the the Borg Warner have transmissions that are very delicate. And these transmissions, you have to baby shift them. If you speed shift them, it's done. On the later ones, Porsche improved it, they outsourced it, and that transmission on the later manual, it's just like a normal car. You shift super fast and you don't have to worry about anything. Most of them are original, as a matter of fact. The early clutches or dual disc clutches, they shatter when they engage. You hear them shattering when they engage. A noise that is part of the charm of those early cars. You can adjust them and it happens again, over and over again. It is what it is. It was so much of an issue that the later cars, Porsche changed to a single disc clutch and it was quieter, less maintenance, but they don't take as much power as the early versions. Cooling systems, like any car that uses water and coolant and rubber to keep the coolant in the car, you need to review the entire cooling system. Plastic side tanks on the side of the radiator. Those plastic side tanks, you'll have some leaking there because most of them are still original. Best bet is just to buy an all aluminum. They work great and you never have to think about it again. Thrust bearing failure. This does happen. But this happens usually on cars that are neglected. They haven't even been put on a lift. 
What is it? There is a pinch bolt stopping the entire drive line from shifting into the engine. That pinch bolt is under stress as it's driving around normally. When you surface a car, remove the pinch bolt, release the pressure on the drive line and retorque that pinch bolt. You never have to think about it again. Most issues that you see with thrust bearing are cars that have the owner and it doesn't even know that exists. Since these cars are so reliable, the biggest issue that you will easily be able to see are the interiors. There is so much glass on the Porsche 928, you only have a little section on the roof and then everything else is pure glass. All that beautiful sun coming inside the car is also destroying the car if the car is left outside. You'll spend more money restoring a Porsche 928 interior than doing all the mechanical updates five times. It's that bad. The dashboards, they all crack. The pods, they all crack. The seats, when you reupholster them, they never look good. They always look puffy, horrible. It's hard to get them to look perfect. Regardless of price, you could spend $7,000. You could spend $5,000 on a new pair of seats, Porsche 928 specific seats, to get them looking right. Otherwise, they look like a puffy mess. When you're looking for a Porsche 928, the interior is actually my biggest buying decision. After owning so many of them, paint, bodywork, mechanicals, that is easy. Sourcing a dashboard, sourcing a pod, gauges that work, rear quarter panels, that is where the big money in that car is. You can easily spend $15,000 to $20,000 on a Porsche 928 interior and not look good. I've seen receipts for Porsche 928 interiors that have been redone and they look terrible. They just look terrible. The interior is how you buy a Porsche 928. If the interior is shot, that's all you need to know about that car. If the interior is nice, then you can proceed to step two, step three, step four. Otherwise, just walk away. I've seen countless amount of people buy Porsche 928s with roached interiors and they'll spend thousands and they still look terrible. It's heartbreaking, don't do that. Buy the one with the nicest interior, worry about preferred maintenance afterwards. Believe me, you'll save a lot of money. Deferred maintenance, any mechanic can handle it. The interior, it takes a master craftsman to truly pull off a redone 928 interior. Is the interior modified, original, or redone? That tells you everything that you need to know about the car. There's an old saying, there are no cheap Porsches. That is especially true for the Porsche 928. The cheapest one will end up being the most expensive one. In money and time, you could throw 20, 30,000 bucks on a parked car and it's still gonna be a parked car. It just is. So buy the nicest one you can afford, spend the money upfront so you don't have to on the back end. Good luck finding the nicest one with the nicest interior possible.